Welcome to this video where we are going to build a toggle switch as you hopefully see here uh, in the picture. Now let's start out by right clicking our project, adding a new item and choosing a razor component for it. I name it toggle switch. I just put toggle and switch both in the naming because I think people, some people name it toggle, others uh, switch. Now I'm adding another item, this time a style sheet. I'm using a naming convention that allows us to use the CSS isolation feature that I think got introduced with .NET 5 to make it work. The ending of the file has to be razor.css. Now it is getting appended to the component. It then is going to style. Now let's, let me copy in here the CSS that I've written and open up the picture so that I can explain to you what it does. So the input will be the green background. In our case, it will be purple. Yeah, that's just personal choice. Now, the height 30 pixel with 60 pixel to make it a bit of this rectangular feeling. Then I'm giving it a bold radius of 15 uh, pixel to make it rounder. I'm setting the WebKit appearance to be none so that it is getting rendered, but it is not getting shown. And the position, I'm going to set it to relative. This allows us to set the position of the pseudo element here to absolute and these values here, so top and left, then are relative to the input up here. The input, the pseudo element here, uh, I'm using before for it, you can also use after, uh, is going to be the circle here. To make it a circle, height and width have to be the same and the border radius has to be 50%, so that makes it a circle, background will be white. Now we want the circle to be smaller than the background, and therefore I'm using the scale property uh, so that the height is only uh, 85%. Then I'm setting the transition to 0.5 seconds. So the goal is when I click it here, that it takes 0.5 seconds to go from right to left, and also 0.5 seconds to go from uh, left to right. How can I make it movable? Therefore, I'm uh, writing another selector. So when the input is checked, then you're moving the pseudo element 30 pixels to the right. And when it is unchecked again, then we are moving it back to left zero and this all takes 0.5 seconds. I hope I could explain it to you a bit. There are better explanations, um, of course, on the internet. Now let's go into here. Now here, of course, we have to render our input and we have to first specify its type to checkbox. Otherwise it would be just a, a word input or a, a text input. Now this value, we are binding it somewhere. I am binding it to a fully implemented property type boolean which is in which indicates uh, if it has been toggled or not the backing field underscore value and the property itself value now i'm marking it with the parameter attribute because when i now um, go into index where we are going to use the component i can now a binds value to and therefore I'm creating a private field again of type boolean with the name toggled you're displaying it up here now I can bind it like that and this all works because in here I've created a parameter with the name value now if you would run it as such we would see an exception that's because we haven't defined an event callback with the name value changed it again has to be marked with the parameter attribute so event callback and we are pausing in a boolean that's because value is of type boolean and here it has to be named value changed so whenever the value has been changed we are uh, calling the invoke async method uh, here on the event callback. Now we can only call it when it actually has changed and to find that out here we are making a quick uh, yeah, quick condition. So if the value that we have stored in the backing field is not equal to the value that has been set to the property 
um, it has changed and then we are going to update the backing field and we are going to call the invoke async method with the new value. We have to do this uh, explicitly here because if we call the value change method here, the parent component is getting updated and then this component again is getting uh, updated too because the parent component has been updated. And if we wouldn't check if the values have actually changed, we would be in a constant loop of updating and the application uh, wouldn't be usable. Now let's go back to the e index. So I think it works. Let's have a look. So we start out toggle false. I click it true. I see it takes 0 0.5 seconds to move it from left to right. Let me give you a quick recap. The input will be the purple element in the background. Position is set relative so that the pseudo element here can be positioned relative to the input. And the whole moving thing is done here by specifying left to be zero initially. And when the input is checked, then we are moving it 30 pixels to the right. And because I've set the transition property to be 0.5 seconds, it all takes 0.5 seconds. Here in toggle switch, I'm defining a property with uh, the parameter attribute. This allows us to bind its value to the toggle uh, field in this case. And to make this all work, I also have to define the value changed uh, event args. And when the value of the backing field is actually different than the value we want to assign to the yeah, value property, then we are going to call the invoke async method by passing it the new uh, value. Thank you very much for your attention.